Hi everybody, uh, welcome back to another video. This time I've got something pretty interesting and unusual. Um, again, I'm not working at the moment, so it's mostly entertainment and kind of gaming content in this channel. Um, I'm going to take a look at something um, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'll tell you why that's significant. I'm using something from Aerosoft here called the Offshore Landmarks North Sea, uh, which is about a thousand assets in the North Sea, you'll see in a moment, um, including a drivable ship. So if we go into Microsoft Flight Simulator, um, this um, game or application is really significant, um, a sort of major, major development in the last few years because they've effectively created a digital twin of the planet Earth. So they've taken all of the Bing um, satellite imagery that they've got for Bing Maps. As you can see, you can zoom right in and see you know, the hedgerows in the field where tractors have turned um, and everywhere on the planet. So this is, um, is that Ukraine? Um, it's absolutely stunning kind of uh, digital twin where every single road is in there. And this was always a challenge for Microsoft or for any fl flight simulators was the scenery. It just took a lot of um, hand created work. Um, so now not only do they have all that satellite photography, but they've turned all of the things that look like buildings. So if you get to a village um, and here's one of my favorite cities, anything that is detected um, as sort of four corners and a roof will automatically generate a 3D building on top of it. So effectively, wherever you fly in the world, you have 3D scenery, you have all of the mountains, all of the valleys, all of the coastline, of course, um, and then some of the cities in the larger, more significant ones, so London, Paris, um, New York, all these kind of things, you have photogrammetry where they've basically taken uh, a lot of aerial photography, satellite photography, and use that to turn in those into very realistic um, 3D models uh, and accurately textured 3D models of the world. So it's a really amazing digital twin. Every house pretty much in the world, every road, every path in the world is in this simulator. So for marine simulation, it's obviously interesting. You have all of the coastline. Um, so let's go down here to one of my favorite coastlines. So Croatia, all of the islands are modeled, all of the inlets, all of the harbors. Um, you can see here even the beautiful uh, turquoise waters of Croatia are modeled in here. And you can um, navigate and fly over all of these areas. And of course, what some of the developers have done is, if you click here, you can see there's a variety of aircraft which you either get with this game uh, or simulator, but there are also some um, add-on developers like Aerosoft have created some vessels here. So it doesn't do 148 kilometers an hour, maybe it's a minimum. And this is just designed uh, so that people can go in and enjoy some of this scenery. So the Aerosoft package, in case you're interested, we'll just stick on the map here for a little bit longer, is this North Sea area. And you can see it's absolutely full of points of interest here. And these are either um, vessels uh, that are supporting the North Sea energy industry, wind turbines, uh, wind turbine substations, oil rigs, drilling rigs, fishing vessels. You can he see here there's the wind farm down here. There's vessels which are sailing around and this is making this otherwise um, pretty barren sea very interesting. It's, and if you ever fly over this, you'll see that the North Sea is actually full of oil platforms and wind turbines and all sorts of things. So we're going to just drop in here briefly for a look to see what this looks like. Um, we can effectively, um, I think I have to double click, I can't remember. Yeah, uh, right click, set as departure. Um, just before I go in, the other thing is that this simulator has the ability to not only view anybody else who's playing this in the world, uh, assuming they're on the same server, we can view all of the real world traffic in this um, so basically what you see on flight tracker or flight radar and these kind of applications. And we've got close to real time weather. So this makes this uh, an absolutely amazing, as I said, digital twin of the earth that's nearly in real time. So let's drop into the North Sea here. It says fly, of course, got the flight simulator. Um, and we'll see, and there's a nice nautical reference here. That's some of the scenery in the US, I think. Uh, and we'll see what this looks like uh, for maritime simulation fans. 
it's a very big application. I think it's taking up about 200 gigabytes now with all the add-ons that I've got for it. Um, it does need a powerful PC to run or an Xbox will run it fine. So there we are. This is where we are in the world. This is the visibility. This is the local time. This is the, the actual wind. Um, and as you can see here, you do have, um, we do have waves um, and we do have some instruments here which are not really accurate. So I'm just gonna, I think she's spinning around here because I'm going backwards. It's probably to do with something I've got plugged in. And we're just gonna go to the external view. So it's designed to be used in this external view. Um, what you can see in the distance are the vessels, um, but also the other pilots which are flying around. So you can see here, this is this North Sea scenery add-on and it's pretty busy as you'd ex it expect. It looks like we've dropped into this area where there are container vessels um, kind of loitering and tankers waiting you know, to go into Rotterdam, that kind of thing. So you can control this just with the keyboard so you don't need expensive controllers. I'm just tapping my keys here and you can see the engine is picking up here and the vessel will start to move off. In this case, there's not any advanced wake effects. You can see there is some simple textures there to show we're moving through the water. As you can see, the water is very realistic. It's a very good simulation of water. Um, and the other thing, as you'd expect, is that the cloud and the lighting associated with the, the weather is very realistic. And this is a fully three-dimensional weather system. So you've got layers of cloud. You'll have the lighting effect of that. So um, quite a beautiful thing. So before I go into a more interesting piece of scenery, we're just going to stay here I'm using my rudder pedals to steer here around the back of this Costco. Um, one thing we can do is we can go up here and we can change the weather. So this is live weather. This means it's taking it from uh, whatever data is available. If I turn that off, we can see we get perfect weather here. Uh, but we can go in and change this um, to a, a series of presets and we can even put in a storm. So there's a more typical um, weather for <laughs> the North Sea. Um, and yeah, if we go back inside, sorry, it was that view. To go back inside, we kind of get a view of what it's like inside. So you can see the vessel does move around on the waves, not quite as realistically as perhaps uh, not as home and some of the, the real nautical simulators, but you get a pretty good view. The other thing I want to show you while we're in here is that we've got multiple views. Um, so we can go to pilot, open this up. So this is the close view, the basic view, um, got a co-pilot view. <laughs> Looking out the front window, you can see you've got very good rain effects here. We can zoom in on some of the instruments. That's not what I expected. That's uh, really sort of external views. We can go into four deck there. Look at the passengers. There's quite a lot of detail in this, and this is really just um, to highlight this nice model here. I think that's what it's all about. So we'll go back to our pilot view. Um, in fact, we'll go to our external view, which is probably the more useful one. Uh, we'll change the weather back to live just to see what remember what we've got. I will pick up speed here. I'm just going to have a quick look at um, this some of the models here from the scenery. So um, it does react in a somewhat realistic way. So we've put full power here. I don't hear engine noises, but we are picking up speed. It'll do, I guess, about 20 knots. Um, and yeah, you can navigate around the world in quite a nice realistic way. So um, this is the North Sea. You can see we've got a very, you know, pretty much realistic real world draw distance. So it's drawing all these vessels right off in the distance here. Um, what I'm gonna do is take you back out to the world and we'll go to a location where there's some more interesting scenery just to show you what that would look like. So I'm tempted to go to Scotland, but I know there's very interesting scenery in um, New Zealand. What we can do is change the time. And down here in a very beautiful place called Queenstown, there's what we call photogra photogrammetry um, data. So let's see if I can spawn in here. Um, it will take a, I can see it's raining from the weather conditions at the top. It will take a, a few seconds to load. Um, 
they're using a very interesting technology. So there you can see one of the photogrammetry cities, it's New York, where every building is pretty much um, close to being, I'd say almost photorealistic. You will see that they're kind of blurry and slightly melted looking. And that's because the most of the imagery is taken from the air. So it struggles to create the detail on the ground. Uh, but that technology is being advanced all the time. Apple have absolutely stunning 3D maps, if you like, of the world. Um, so I expect Microsoft just to make this better and better and better. So I've got a bit of a problem here because I can see already I'm floating <laughs> over one of these super realistic uh, parts of the world. I'm going to drop her down. This is a, something called SLU, so you can move your vehicles around in the world as you want. Let's just see if she comes in here and floats. Oops, not good. All right, we will try that again. I think it's worth it. Um, the simulator basically gets confused when you're in something which is not flying or not got wheels. Um, there are seaplanes, which is, I think, the model which everybody's used. And we'll go down here again. Let's see if I can drop it down. All right, so it's mm, not going to let me spawn in here. I don't think. Uh, you did get a glimpse of the scenery there, so I think it's because this is a lake. The lake is, um, or it's a fjord. It's maybe not quite at sea level, so let's try Bunny Scotland. That's live weather. Quickest way to Scotland. Oh, here we go. Um, so we'll take you to somewhere I know that's a really intimate little place. Uh, so that's open, and we've got this beautiful loch here. Let's see if we can spawn in here. It's a bit weird. I'm trying to. Don't want to depart on the island. Okay. Let's see what Scotland looks like with some mountains and all the rest. Hopefully, we don't spawn in there. That seems to be the problem there. So it's not, you know, the perfect um, maritime simulator by any means, but it's a very interesting way to explore coastlines and see what they look like from um, the sea. And I think because the world is so detailed, um, that could be a valuable thing uh, in itself. So here we are. Um, I'm going to move it to that cockpit view, I think it was. So cockpit pilot close. Let's just go out to the landing uh, like that. Let's keep it like that. So it starts off by going backwards. Um, and you can use the mouse here to look around. So there we go. So we're on Loch Sween, as far as I remember. Tevialich is on the left here. So I'm going to see if I can get her to turn into the left here. She's reacting very slowly to my rudder inputs. Yeah, generally I have problems to get it to turn here. Um, I think because I've got rudder, oh there we go, rudder pedals seem to help. Ah, okay, it seems to be related to which view you're in when you're in the inside view, it's not operating properly. Um, yeah, let's just go full power. On the left there you've got Teviali, let's just sail into the harbour and I'll end the video there so you can get a nice experience of what it's like to use Microsoft Flight Simulator in a boat or a ship even. Um, there are a few maritime add-ons for this. This is one that comes free with this North Sea add-on. So if you're flying, I recommend this because you get this free boat. Um, if you go to, I think it's flightsim.ti or TO, um, there are some add-ons. You can get some uh, motor boats and these kind of things. Nobody, as far as I know yet, has done any kind of larger vessel um, or anything particularly interesting, but you know, a little crew boat like this is pretty interesting, can get into most places. Um, but as you can see, the main reason you may want to look at this for maritime digital reasons is that you have this complete digital twin of the Earth. Um, 
I know this area because I've been there in a sailing boat. This is a place called Cool Scottish. It's a long narrows. You can go up there and it looks pretty much exactly like that. They haven't taken the trees, um, you know, from photogrammetry. These are trees which are simply modeled. Um, and then this entrance to Teviala here is a bit tricky. You've got a few rocks. I don't think there's any trees on any of these rocks, but what the, the AI has done is tried to look at these aerial photo photographs from above and determine whether you know there's bushes on them or anything like that so here we are we're going to try and sail in between the islands there are some buoys and lights and some of these as far as i remember but you do have this rocky entrance to Teviala harbor um, i do have an add-on here which might show up which adds um, jetties and marinas and these kind of things so whenever in the satellite photography there's a the marina will add 3D boats, but I don't see any here. Um, we'll probably get it at Crinan. But this is a pretty amazing thing. It doesn't look exactly like Tevialich because um, these buildings are created based on the 2D images from above. So there are buildings where there are buildings here, but the buildings don't look exactly like they, they look like in real life. I know for a fact that in this corner over here is the inn, <laughs> the pub, Tevialich Inn, and it's a more modern building than these kind of Tudor buildings you can see there. Um, so you can see I can zoom in and zoom out, it's just changing the angle. And you can see there is the jetty over there. So this is representative of Teviallich Harbour. In summer, this is full of boats at moorings. And yeah, I generally say you don't have the maneuverability of a real vessel uh, quite. I'm using my rudder pedal, so it's um, not the typical use case. But generally a nice thing to do if you want to go in and experience what it's like um, to have your vessel uh, on a particular piece of the world. So that's all from me. That is doing maritime simulation in Microsoft Flight Simulator using the Aerosoft uh, crew vessel that comes with their North Sea add-on package. I look forward to your comments and have a great day. Bye for now.